Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, the redhead Zelia, here with my real tight homegirl and daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hey, that's me. How are you doing today? I'm loving the dream because I'm here with you. Uh, oh my God. Sorry we're a little late. Yeah. There's some things happening. Maybe we'll talk about it at the end of the pod. Yeah. Before we get into today's episode, we want to remind you to hide your wife, hide your kids. This is not a politically correct podcast. We say bad words. We have offensive opinions and we are unapologetic. And mm-hmm. so if that's not for you because you're... <laughs> You might want to find yourself another dumpster. For real. If you don't like what we're doing here, why are you even here? Hello, and how could you not, though? Also, we have an Instagram at Reality TV Cringe, so go follow us there. And we got a Patreon, baby. Patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe with tons of bonus trash up on there. Plenty. Oh, plenty. Mm-hmm. Um, also, if you are watching on YouTube, please don't forget to like and to comment and to share and to subscribe. Anything you do is helpful to us in the algorithm. So we appreciate that. And thank you. Thank you. All right. Before we get into the latest episode of Sister Wives, which I just can't. Every time I get up on this podcast, I am complaining about how they are manufacturing this season, how they are editing and producing and cobbling together scenes that we are are seeing over and over and over again. And this is probably the worst offender episode out of them all. It was really bad. It was all filler, all bullshit that I don't care about. I don't care about Christine's birthday. I'm sorry. And we know, though. And we already know it all. I mean, it's just like so ridiculous. We could have had the whole Coyote Pass scene in this episode. But no, we got to wait for it. I know. We have to wait until next week when she's talking about her estate, Janelle, Uh, ambiguously. And Mm -hmm. so we are going to have to divine from the gods what (laughs) she's actually talking about. It's getting fucking old. And I think there's only going to be 14 episodes. This was the 12th. So we have probably two more. It's going to end around Thanksgiving. And we're going to have we're going to have the same amount of information Mm -hmm. as like episode two or three. Yep. Nothing new has been given in this season. Nothing new at all. And you know what? We're still watching it rapidly. Like a couple of rabbit because it's raccoons. our job it, yeah but i mean i would like our job to be pleasurable agree i like to enjoy my time yeah every week it's a slog i sister know wives, but we try to keep it entertaining for you and we know there are so many crazy people just like us out yeah. here who are thoroughly invested in the browns and so we're gonna keep recapping yeah. you can't stop us nope all right before we get into the episode i know that we have a couple of items that we wanted to talk about yeah just a little bit. Okay. Um, well, first, before you <laughs> before you get into all of that, Beatrice, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the matching tattoos that you, yeah. in your forensic raccoon investigation, discovered. Yeah. So David Woolley, Christine's new lover husband, he posted on Instagram just a couple days ago, um, a series of photos of him and Christine on a Plexus cruise. Yeah. And there was one photo in particular, and we'll put it in the YouTube video for those of you watching. Um, there's one photo in particular where he's got a shirt off and he's got a simple tattoo. And I noticed from my raccoon memory mm-hmm. that it's the same tattoo that Christine has. On her boobie? Yeah, on her boobie. Uh-huh. So they got matching titty tattoos. Because if you guys don't remember, Christine posted on June 16th, 2023, a picture of her in a black dress with off the shoulder and she was standing next to Janelle and you could see her titty tattoo and it's the same symbol and apparently it's some weird Celtic symbol that means new beginnings. I love it. I mean, it's cute. El scandalo though, but right I love, on the breast Yeah. Ow, I love that it's a matching tattoo. I'm like, they must be serious. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was cool. That is cool. But not a lot of people noticed. I was commenting on it and stuff and people were like, what? What are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what matching tattoo. So we had to throw it out there. Yeah. And let everybody know that they have matching tattoos and that they are in love. They are in love. In case you missed it. Now, also, we did have somebody write in last week after our last episode. Yeah. Her name was Holly H. And I have what she wrote. And I thought we would share it and maybe discuss. She writes, hi, from Utah here. Oftentimes, the women don't put the father's names on the birth certificate so that they can collect and receive Medicaid, food stamps, and chip benefits. Mm. To which you said, how do they not get caught for that? And then she answered, they have. 
Tom Green was a big one that got caught for welfare fraud, but many of them do it by not putting the father's name on the birth certificate. I feel like that's why they oftentimes also have home births. Mm -hmm. Hilldale, Hilldale, Utah and Colorado City, Arizona are huge polygamy cities. I bet there is so much that goes on, but they can't prove. They will chase you out of these cities if you show up there. It is crazy. Mm -hmm. So this is in response, obviously, to us discussing whether Cody had put his name on Christine's children's birth certificates. Mm -hmm. We know he did with Janelle, but I guess it's a thing with polygamist families to keep the father's name off the certificate so that they can get these government benefits. Yeah. And that makes me wonder, okay, no wonder it's illegal it, or it was illegal in Utah because you have all these people kind of gaming the system. And then on top of all of this stuff of getting the benefits and everything, they're also filing bankruptcy right. and putting their money in weird hedge funds and shit and LLCs and all of this stuff. So they're like gaming the system. And I mm -hmm. mean, more power, power to you. I mean, fuck the system. But like, <laughs> I'm just like, that's crazy. <laughs> it is crazy. And I think Christine has declared bankruptcy. I wonder how many times all of them have yeah. declared bankruptcy. Do any of you know? Because we want to know. I want to know the coins. So that was interesting. And that made me remember this time that I went to, I think we went to Kanab, Utah. Mm. We were driving around Utah, Arizona, and we ended up in Colorado City. And I was super unfamiliar with all things Mormonism. Mm -hmm. I didn't know where I was. I just needed some gas, honey. Yeah. Pulled into Colorado City. Everybody was kind of dressed old fashioned. Oh, yeah. I don't think like Warren Jeff's old fashioned, but pretty old fashioned. And I'm telling you, everybody was armed. Everybody was armed. And they were looking at me sideways. I'm just a little lady trying to get some gas. But I could feel how oh unwelcome God. I was in Colorado City. Really? This was 20 years ago. Maybe things have changed. I have no idea. But I got the fuck out of that place. Were you by yourself? No, I was with a friend. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Crazy. They were watching us very closely. Big yikes. Yes. Last but not least, <laughs> you... <laughs> spent two hours watching the most recent interview with Cody Brown yeah. for Mormonism Live. Yeah. Which is a thing, I guess. The Mormons like to talk and they like they to do. do it live. Yeah. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, Cody was on this weird podcast called Mormonism Live. Um, if you want to go find it, it, just search Mormonism Live Cody Brown on YouTube and it's the first thing. It's a two hour long podcast. Of Cody talking all things about Mormonism. And there's some things that he kind of mentioned in there that I thought were interesting. That's why I took all these freaking notes. Oh my notes. God, she brought the notes. And I One thought maybe page. there'd be four little items we could knock around and talk about. She walks in here with two pages, <laughs> single space. <laughs> Notes on the corner. It's all handwritten, though. Oh, my God. <laughs> you with your four pages of notes well, for this episode. Well, but I episode. mean, this makes sense. <laughs> but nonetheless, I'm very curious because I knew I would not be able to sit through no. a two-hour interview with Cody Brown because all he does is lie and make mm -hmm. shit up and gaslight. So let me ask you this, because I really don't know the contents of the interview. Yeah. But did he lie and make up shit and gaslight? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, there were some weird things that he kind of sprinkled in there that I thought were interesting. Like, he talked a lot about Mormonism as if he's like some expert in in Mormonism but some things that he said about mm -hmm. it were interesting like I guess he is kind of distancing himself from like the organized religion part of it because he thinks that a lot of the doctrines that he was told in like the AUB church and even the LDS church um he believes were only taught as mechanisms of control like for the women and for the men involved and everything so he doesn't necessarily uphold a lot of the beliefs anymore okay. but he's still like a mormon he still considers hmm. himself a polygamist kind of um he said some things where he's like well if the teachings that i was taught aren't true like when i find out when i'm dead then whatever at least i was trying to be a good person which right. i thought was interesting because i'm like hmm. you're not really a good person <laughs> um he also says that he doesn't believe in the concept of eternal marriage anymore okay. so in the polygamous faith, but also in the LDS faith, there's this concept of eternal marriage that when you get married to somebody in the earthly realm, then you're also sealed in the Mormon temple, which means that you're sealed to each other in eternity. Okay. In heaven. And this is kind of what Mary re like references when she's talking about whether she wants to spend eternity with yeah. Cody when he doesn't even want to be with her in this life. And she does kind of talk about the celestial 
eternal ramifications of their marriage. So this is what that's about. Yes. And he was asked this question by one of the guys on the podcast, like whether or not he believes in that anymore now that he's gone through three divorces. And Cody said no. He's like, I don't believe in eternal marriage. So like after we've been divorced and everything, like if we can reconcile a little bit or like be amicable, then maybe we can still be sealed for eternity. But he says he doesn't believe that God would condemn us to a life in eternity in heaven Mm -hmm. with somebody that we hated or like somebody that we couldn't get along with in the earthly realm, which I thought was kind of interesting. And then I was asking my Mormon friend, Ethel, my former Mormon friend, Ethel, Mm -hmm. she grew, she was in the LDS faith. So she wasn't a fundamentalist Mormon per se, but she said that this is like a big thing that's taught in Mormonism, um, that there's no real ramifications for getting a divorce spiritually. Um, like they don't really teach what would happen from that. But okay. I mean, men can get remarried in the Mormon church and then be sealed to those women in eternity. It's like a very weird convoluted thing. Can women also remarry and get sealed mm-hmm. to another man? Okay. Yeah. So, all right. But Cody mentioned that. And I'm like, okay, so <laughs> you're just going to be sealed to eternity for with Robin then? Convenient. Well, that's what he wants because he's her best customer I mean yeah in this life and in the next he also calls Robin a diesel jeans model like <laughs> I did hear this I mean the subreddits were kind of exploding about yeah. that so what is this about does she claim that she was a model at some point no I think for diesel she jeans? thought she was hot in diesel jeans I think that's probably what it was like she was so hot she's a diesel jeans model because her butt looks so good okay so it, they're that's not I'm putting thinking. it out there that she was actually a professional model for diesel jeans because that's the way it kind of sounded to me I don't know I don't think so he kind of said it like off the cuff like okay. when a diesel jeans model came into our life okay. and wanted to be a part of our family how could I say no like that's the context that he said well I did see the break dancing video and she is very sexy I am she's very <laughs> sexy with her moves so maybe you put a pair of diesel jeans oh, on all those God. moves and you become ensorcelled as a man <laughs> I mean, maybe. a man can become ensorcelled he got his pencil nice and hard oh my god he does talk a little bit about the show in this podcast episode where he says that initially it started with good intentions and you know he was really excited to do the show with the family um and he used to watch some of the earlier seasons and he used to be proud of it but now as it's gone 18 seasons and he's gone through three divorces he says he never watches it anymore um and that the show's turned to all drama partly because of the network because it makes for better television okay so i'm like okay That's what every reality tv star says i know and he said that the family couldn't move on from the drama And he watches and Robin watches Mm -hmm. because they are both changing their behavior. Like during the season, we can see she's not crying as much as she used to. No. For example, she's also changing her eyebrows. Mm -hmm. They don't look like apostrophes Mm -hmm. anymore. So mm, I don't believe you. I think you follow a lot. I think you're very, very interested in what people are saying Mm -hmm. about you because you're a narcissist, sir. 100%. And then like this whole podcast is so annoying to go through because Cody talks a lot. Like he just talks at you and these people are asking him questions and he's not really answering them fully Mm -hmm. he's just like giving a long fucking monologue speech like word salad like what are you even saying like trying to act like he's super smart and dignified but i'm like dude you sound you're not even answering the questions dumb he does sound dumb so dumb daddy he does talk about how robin what took a lot of the brunt from like the og wives and everything um especially at the beginning and he's like it was basically from like day one ever since we had our honeymoon which all the other wives got he does say that Uh. and then the other wives trash talked robin so much that that is what led to their downfall this is the revisionist history bullshit that i cannot stand yeah she had an 11 day honeymoon christine took a road trip for like two days Uh up to see win brown or something in wyoming Mm -hmm. nobody really had a great marriage and wedding and or a great honeymoon Mm -hmm. so it's just lies and also we saw in the first season while christine is literally in labor, you run over to Robin's house to say hi to her, and she's texting you. You're fucking on your phone, smiling because you're talking to Robin. Yeah. And you go and kiss Robin before you even married her, and then you get back to the delivery of Truly. Yeah. 
And then the wedding dress fiasco. There's mm-hmm. plenty of reasons that the women were side-eyeing Robin and you contributed to them, my guy. Yep. And he says in this podcast, he's like, anybody, I encourage you to watch the show from the beginning and see how Robin was in the wrong because I don't see it. Like oh, He literally says that. We are actually doing that. Yeah. And I can see it. And I, I didn't go into it wanting to vilify or no, demonize right. Robin. I'm just watching. And absolutely, starting in the first season, they did just about everything wrong. You can't mm-hmm. tell me. He wasn't driving on the weekends to go court Robin and not banging her. Uh huh. He was absolutely banging her. 100%. While Christine is heavy with child. Yep. Yeah, just lies and obfuscation. No yep. respect for that man. None at all. And then the other thing that's been going around the internet a bit was Cody refusing to answer someone's question. So at the end of this whole podcast, there were a couple callers that called in with specific questions for Cody Brown. They were told to make it respectful. So this one caller calls in and says, hi, Cody. Um, I noticed that a lot on the show, you talk badly about the other wives for keeping the children away from you. But Robin has kept her children away from their biological father. So how do you justify that? To which Cody says, Robin's not doing that. And then the caller interrupts him and says, do the kids know that their father is dying of cancer? (gasps) And Cody says, well, they've chosen to. No, actually, never mind. I'm not going to answer that because it's somebody else's life. So I'm just going to respectfully decline to answer that. And then at the very end of this episode, which this whole episode was live, it was filmed live, Mm -hmm. wasn't recorded, pre-recorded and edited. Cody asks the hosts of the podcast to edit that part out. And they were like, we can't edit that out. This is live, dude. And Cody's like, well, whatever you put online, can you just edit it out though? And they did it. Oh my gosh. I thought also he disparaged uh, Robin's, one of Robin's mothers, like the OG wife to Robin's stepdad or whatever. I thought... He disparaged that wife, and then he asked them to also take that out of the stream. He did, because he disparaged her in the context of eternal marriage, because he was saying, I don't think it would be fair, or like, he doesn't think that God would think it would be fair to bind Robin's stepdad or dad or whatever, who's married to this awful woman, (laughs) this terrible woman. It would be unfair to her, but it would also be unfair to the husband. And so he believes that God will judge us all, you know, when we die, and he will decide who will be eternally stuck with is what could. So that was the context of that. And then he asked, maybe take that part out because I don't want her to see this. Why would he take an interview at this particular time Uh while season 18 is airing and everybody hates him and Robin? Like, why would you put yourself on live internet? It's not television, but on the internet live streaming and open yourself up to questions from the audience. You know, there's raccoons everywhere. We are watching the raccoons. (laughs) Watching that (laughs) is the raccoon comment of the year. Thank you, whoever asked that question. That's awesome. I know. Because you cannot justify that shit. You hypocrite. That's why he declined to answer it. But like this whole thing, it felt like he was kind of, I mean, it was him producing himself and trying to make himself look good because there were a few moments where he was talking about the show and how it's hard for him to watch like some of his worst moments be broadcasted on live television and then have people judge him for that. And I'm like, well... I could understand that if you were a decent, respectable person. But like, it just feels like it's been several seasons, Mm -hmm. several years of just your worst moments being put on TV and you thinking that you've done nothing wrong. And he talks a lot about his failures with the marriages and everything, but Mm -hmm. he doesn't take any accountability for them. He still says, well, they chose to leave and I allowed them to have that choice. But it's my failures so it's like he's trying to take accountability, but not. He's skirting right. around it right? just to make himself look a little bit better in the public eye. You know, and it would be one thing if like the camera caught him in the act doing something that was untoward or wrong or toxic. But then he sits his ass down on a couch <laughs> in his talking heads and he doesn't just double down. He quadruples down yeah. and says even more toxic, hateful shit on the couch. So mm-hmm. you can't tell me it's the way that TLC is editing it because these editors suck. They do suck. It's based on on you what you're saying and what you're doing and right you can't take accountability for that well then you're never going to get your family back Mm-mm. 
Not at you all. You're never going to get your family back. Well, thank you for doing the heavy lifting, Beatrice. You're welcome. So that I didn't have to do that. <laughs> I did not want to sit there for two hours with Cody. I, I have enough of this shit week to week. I sent it to you thinking that you were going to watch it. Hell and no. then she texted me like two days ago. Did you take notes on that? <laughs> Hell no. I didn't watch it. I've already, I'm already oversaturated with <laughs> Cody and Robin Brown. It was a lot. I can barely take this season. It's a lot. It is a lot. It's so redundo. Mm-hmm. Redundata. Yes. Redundant. <laughs> All right, so shall we get into this episode? Yeah, I suppose. Wives? Season 18, episode 12, entitled, Can't See the Forest for the Trees. Get it? Because Mary's taking down two pine trees, which is an analogy for her marriage <laughs> and how she's going to feel on the other side of her divorce. Get it? Do you get it? No, I didn't get it until just now. Okay, well, I'm here to help. <laughs> so this episode starts with Christine's 50th birthday. She's having a 50s themed birthday party. I in it was her 20s themed. It's 50s. It was Is like it? a sock hop and a soda fountain <sighs> and everything. Hello, stay with it. Aren't you watching? <laughs> I'm I know snoring. you're snoring. You're totally checked out. Yeah, no, it's a 50s themed birthday party. She's dressed up. A lot of the guests are dressed up. And she seems really happy. Yeah. Janelle calls this like a declaration of her independence and also a party that was just easy and fun. There's no politics. There's nobody showing up two hours late and giving yeah. all of these excuses. It was just nice to be together as a family. What did you think of this scene? I loved Janelle's subtle shade to Cody mm-hmm. and Robin. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, are these people really just showing up late to everything? Because they showed mm-hmm. up late to Gwen's wedding. I'm like, are they doing that Logan's all the time? graduation, by the way. They showed up way. late for that too? They showed up late to Logan's graduation, which I didn't know because I haven't watched that season yet, but I was watching my girl, Red Lipstick Reality TV, which I recommend hey, that girl. everybody watch. But she was talking about the stadium where Logan's graduation actually took place in Arizona. She has been there. She has gone gone to the stadium she has attended shit there and robin's i guess excuse at the time that logan graduated was that she got lost they didn't know where i was it was so confused i don't know what happened what happened wow whereas red lipstick reality tv says it's really easy it's just like one staircase it leads you right to the stadium (laughs) you cannot miss it so she called robin out but yeah she was late for logan wow late for gwen she would have been late for this if she were invited. 100%. She would not have gone. Well, she was all sad that she wasn't invited. It stings a little bit that Does it? the family's getting together without us and we weren't invited. I'm like, did you want to be invited? No. Like, you wouldn't have gone anyway because Cody hates Christine and right. wants nothing to do with her. Never wants to see her ever again. You guys won't even right. do family reunions. Last episode, was it last episode or the one before two. that? Yeah, two episodes Where you guys ago. literally said you won't do family reunions because it's not safe. <laughs> this is Gary, huh? and you're getting mad like you're getting upset because you weren't invited to this family right. gathering well i mean she will not miss an opportunity to victimize herself and Damsel her little tendies, distress her little tendies oh my god we also have mckelty which i try so deeply not to hate because i feel like the world is filled with hate at this time yeah and i want to be an emissary of love i just want to be an envoy <laughs> of good vibes but every time mckelty is on my television i, I just can't i just check out every time they're on it's like shh be quiet (laughs) be quiet you don't have to say you don't have to always be the main character right the center of the room sucking up all the air in the room we've got christine for that yeah for real it doesn't need to be you it's christine's day but then to learn that she actually told robin and cody before christine that she was pregnant with twins because well Robin had morning sickness and I'm having morning sickness. And so I just, I needed some like medical advice and Robin has been there. So that's why I told her first. (laughs) Oh my God. Can I just say, as a mother who has been divorced one to 2000 times from various (laughs) men across the world, I would have been deeply hurt by that. Yeah, I thought so too. We got, I got a couple DMs on Instagram of people being like the audacity mm-hmm. of McKelty to tell Robin first. And my whole thought process with this was McKelty probably told them first because they would have felt butt hurt because they weren't. But then Christine goes on to say in this episode, McKelty has such an amazing relationship with Cody and Robin and how it's always going to be that way. And she's like, I love it. It's okay. Some things she'll tell, she'll tell them Mm-mm. first and some things she'll tell me first, no. but it's okay. No, Christine is just not trying 
to let them see her sweat yep. or see her be in pain. And yep. she's trying to act like it's okay. Plus, she doesn't want to throw McKelty under the bus because McKelty does a great job doing that herself. Uh -huh. But I'm telling you as a mother, that would be so very painful, especially because of how Cody has treated Christine. 100%. And how awful Cody has been to Christine. It's yep. on television. McKelty, you can't miss it. And Robin has co-signed it. I would say Robin has orchestrated all of it. She has been abusive to your mother. And you are telling Robin and Cody, Cody, who is objectively, verbally abusive to your mother. You're telling that man before you're telling your own mother that you have twins. I lost any shred of respect that I had for you. And I had mm. virtually none. Yeah, <laughs> and I can't wait to never have to see her on my television again. For and too many tacos, Tony. Do you think they're going to be on other seasons? Yes, with the way that they're talking. Yes, they're like, already filming uh, for the next season, and yeah. Christine's wedding is going to be part of that. And so Tony and McKelty are going to roll up, <sighs> and they're going to infect my life again <laughs> and kill my vibe. Vibe check. Vibe check. It's not good. The vibe check's not good. All right. After this, we. Bop on over to Parowan, Utah, because I just can't get enough of hearing Mary talk about her online <laughs> clothing business and how she's going to renovate her carriage house. Into a steampunk gears and weird <laughs> That thing. surprised me that that would be her <laughs> aesthetic. Like, I was like, Steampunk? What? Like, really? Or, really? Well, yeah. I mean... Mary talking about her wet bar and how she's like so particular about how mm -hmm. things need to look and everything. Circles are dumb, but I like gears and stuff. And no white. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, this I is can't. the most fillery filled segment of this entire episode because we've already done it I, we've seriously? already been there as you guys were moving stuff out of the carriage house yeah. we were there when you came back to parowan and talked about your carriage house and which yep. and your plans for it and now we have another week where we're in this goddamn carriage house <laughs> talking about some design for it and i'm like i could not care Less. with your gay best friend who's like actually trying to give you good advice and you're just like not of course she's not going to take it. it so i thought that was a little interesting meeting blair who is her gay best friend as you say and also an interior designer he's of coming course, with yeah. all of the plans but she talks a little bit about blair as it connects to her being catfished and so there mm -hmm. was a lot of flashbacks but she was talking about how now in the year of our lord 2023 she has to be careful to vet anybody that she meets online. Yeah. She needs to do a video call. You better hop your happy ass on a Zoom so I can see you with my own Ugh. eyes or else she doesn't take the next step with anybody. So cringe. I'm like, why are you talking to anybody online without doing a video call? All she though? does is be online. I know. She only is on Instagram and Facebook selling her LuLaRoe trash. Yeah. <laughs> and so anybody she meets online, she has to also see and i don't blame her because well, she yeah. was catfished by a woman yeah she sent a picture with her sucking on a banana and she sent voicemails beatrice yes to this alleged sam person who was yes. a woman who was catfishing her and i have to ask you do you know that those voicemail recordings are still out there and so my question to you is should we do like a patreon exclusive <laughs> and listen to them yes. or is that too cruel like no i feel like no i feel like there's a limit to what we should do as people like we should essentially be kind at the end of the day would it be too unkind if we listened to those voicemail messages no, I think and then talked mad shit it. about it behind a paywall bitch that should be a patreon exclusive i don't want I to think be we mean need to do that. it's not gonna be mean kind of, she doesn't want anybody to hear those messages she did it she did it and then it was on tv the whole thing and she's like it got blown out of proportion well yeah because you put it on tv <laughs> and you did this whole catfishing thing because you were lonely and I get that and your husband wasn't touching your poo. And I 100% advocate for you to get out and get your That's own joy. That's so cool and everything. But That's like, fine. Why are you sending pictures of yourself sucking on a banana to somebody you don't even know? Why are you sending voice messages talking dirty to them when you haven't even seen them? Like, learn the internet. <laughs> learn the internet. Well, and she did interestingly say something like she has her own truth about the catfishing. Like that there are actually people in her family, I guess the Brown family, that have their versions of what happened with that catfishing. Meaning but Cody. she knows her truth. I don't know. I wonder if it's somebody other than Cody. Because I recall Cody being actually really well-adjusted and cool 
with the family when this all happened. For example, he was talking to Leon, who was really upset about what had happened. And mm. he was telling Leon, I think he was taking some ownership for some of it and wanting Leon not to be too upset with Mary. Hmm. So I don't know if it's Cody who has his own truth about it. It, it might be Robin. Oh. Remember, because there's rumors that Robin's really good friend, Kendra, right. knew that Mary was getting catfished, which means Robin may have known Mary was getting catfished when it was going down. Wouldn't so that maybe. be crazy if like Robin was the catfish? Oh my God. <laughs> or Robin put the woman up to crazy. the catfish. I wouldn't put it past that demon i mean what's his name neve on cat mtv's yeah, yeah. catfish yeah. like that's happened before like friends mm -hmm. of family members oh, yeah. like putting up other people to catfish the people that they know for years sometimes yes so it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility that would be crazy wild though. and that'd be so, so crazy. crazy now after this we head on over to janelle now janelle is in flagstaff and i guess she has moved out of the dormitory apartment yeah and she has rented a beautiful abode nice upscale nice appointments yeah. nice doors and there's granite yeah. in the kitchen and there's space for her to walk around because that other apartment was booty af it was cramped as hell it was smaller than my little apartment that i have here i'm like damn props to you though janelle for finally getting out of that and yes. upgrading but she feels a little weird about it because she's got this apartment and now cody's got to come by and see it right i guess he's going to be hanging pictures at some point but janelle is regarding this new apartment apartment as her sanctuary her space this is her safe space everybody needs a safe space this is a good place for savannah it's also i guess 1500 square feet which would be bigger than the casita that she actually wants to build yeah in coyote pass so very interesting i'm happy for her it's a much nicer apartment way nicer i'm a taurus honey mm -hmm. like if my if my abode and my home does not please me yeah and stimulate me, I cannot be happy. You I can't am hang. very uncomfy. I cannot hang. I cannot hang at like a Fairfield. Yeah. I cannot hang at a motel at six. Are you kidding? I can't sleep. Girl. I went to that COVID <laughs> hotel in Galveston. I could not sleep at night. I was talking to all my friends all drunk because I couldn't. You were texting me about I was it. Texting yeah. you about being there because I just it has to be nice. It has yeah. to smell good. It has to be clean. It has to be pretty. So Janelle is my Torian sister. Of I know course. she feels so much better in this apartment. Oh, totally. But she also does say that it's kind of a damper that Cody's there because she's like, I didn't really want him to be here. Yeah, why are you here? <laughs> but sir? she invited him to hang up pictures. I'm like, why couldn't you have hung, hung him up? I don't know. I think she's also trying to facilitate the relationship with Savannah because Probably. Cody needs his wives to make sure that he always has access to his children. Right. Savannah is, I guess, happy to see Cody. I don't know. She doesn't seem like it. But Cody says her, him and Savannah's relationship is very sweet. Right. Very nice. Well, that's because Savannah is very sweet of and course. gentle and nice. It's not because of you, Cody. Nope. And so as Cody's walking around, ooing and awing <laughs> over this new apartment, he's getting the distinct sense that there's no place for him here. Yeah. That this is all about Janelle and Savannah. Duh. That the reason she wants this apartment is because they actually shared the dormitory apartment together, dormitory apartment together, to which I have to say, really... How often was Cody Brown over at that booty dormitory apartment before she kicked him out over the fight? I mean... I can't imagine a lot. I doubt he was even really staying there. He says he was like staying there and living there with her. And I'm like, right. were you though? The last time when you came over and yelled at her and you were being a piece of shit, you just went over there to fill up your water. Yeah. <laughs> that was like literally I it. hot water. I can't do cold water anymore. And like last episode, you were saying, I have a home. Like I have a mm -hmm. home. I have a family. Like I'm happy there. I'm like you don't live anywhere else, dude. Right. Don't act like you do. Nope, he does not. And then we go back at this point to Parowan. And I hate this. Can't we just have one scene that we watch to completion and yep. then go to the next scene that we get to watch to completion? Why do we have to bop back and forth I know, it's three so or four annoying. times for somebody who has to outline and take notes it's a whole know, lot it is the a lot sacrifices i made for you <laughs> Somebody Somebody the the kidneys. so we're back in parowan and blair is pulling out his designs mm -hmm. jen finally arrives and mary is tickled she's looking at the designs she's liking them a lot this is uh, i think where she talks about 
admitting that she is a control freak. Yeah. We get the flashbacks of her in the cul-de-sac, mm-hmm. I guess, planning her own build, which I never saw those seasons. Me neither. So I'm interested to go back and see how she was. But she says that she's actually a control freak because she has to protect herself because nobody else is going to take care of her. Walls up. Walls up. I mean, that's literally what but it I is. But I mean... It's true. I mean, yeah, because Cody never advocates her Mm -mm. for her. So, yeah, I mean, I totally get it. But, like, also go to therapy. Jeez. Stop. God. Worthy up. For real. Then we go back to Janelle and Cody. And this is where we start to talk about Coyote Pass. Yeah. Which I think is interesting because Cody's, like, walking around the apartment talking about... The size of the apartment versus what she proposes to build on Coyote Pass. And he's using terms like we and us. And she says to the camera, I don't know what's gotten in his top ramen gourd, but there's no we. There's no us. This is me. I'm the one that's solely financing this. It's not going to be him. So he has no say in what I'm going to do on my piece of property. That was pretty big. And she said that she doesn't even know if he'll ever light a fire under under his own ass to go and build over there so she's just gonna build because she needs an estate she needs something to pass down to her Mm -hmm. kids that's the sole motivation for building out there and she's like and if i build out there and they decide to build out there then there's such a thing as a really tall fence Mm -hmm. i'm like damn okay that would be so turbo awkward though can you imagine her children gabe and garrison for example Mm -hmm. coming over to have dinner with their mom and seeing cody right next door at robin's house yeah in bed with Robin where he always is apparently. And it would just be very, very strange. Personally, I would not want to build on Coyote Pass if I was Janelle. I would want them to buy me out. Yep. I'd want to purchase somewhere else, maybe go back to Utah, build my own little house and forget about them and never, ever have to see them again. I know. I don't know why she doesn't just go in half seas on a property with Christine and then they can just like live near each other with all of their kids and be happy. Like, that's what you should do, Janelle. I don't even know why you're in Flagstaff, but... I think she loves the mountains, actually. I think she loves Flagstaff, generally. There are. There's mountains all over. You don't need to be right next to Cody. No! All right. um, I guess the conversation is just getting awkward. They're winding down. Like, Cody doesn't know what to say. He's commenting on the difference between the granite on the island versus the granite on the countertops as if this is something that we all haven't seen before. We have. But he doesn't know what to say. And he this is where he says something like the fact of the matter is, is that I spend and I'm paraphrasing, but I spend the majority of my time at Robin's house with my kids there. That's my life. When I'm here with Janelle, I can't talk about that life. Ergo, I end up not being able to talk about anything. And so this conversation he's telling us on the couch, this conversation is going nowhere. It's awkward. It's it's stilted because I don't know what to say. I can't talk about my real wife. I can't talk about my real home. I can't talk about my real life. Talk about disconnected from Mm -hmm. everybody except for Robin and her crotch goblins. Like, it's so crazy to me that he can say these things on TV and then also say, Robin's not my favorite. I don't favor anybody. I treated all the wives with the most respect and I treated them all good. And they just trash talk me and they keep me away from my kids and they're just evil, terrible people. And the whole reason why the family's broken up is because of Christine. Like, it's just crazy. Yeah, he's crazy. You're literally saying it out loud, dude. I spent all of my time Mm -hmm. with Robin and her kids. I can't talk about anything else but them because they consume all of my time. But I don't have any favorites. (laughs) Just I've so never had any crazy. favorites. Wow. Um, Janelle also says that Cody has not made any attempt whatsoever yeah. to like book a counselor, to introspect, to try and develop himself spiritually, physically, personally. He keeps making these attempts to reconcile. Mm-hmm. Keep He keeps asking her, why can't we reconcile? And she's just like, mm, I don't really want to. And plus... I don't have anything in common with your other wives, i.e. Robin and And Mary. Mary. I don't see them in my life. We don't have anything that intersects. And so reconciliation just doesn't seem to make sense, which seems to make him sad. I mean, I guess like the way he's framing all of this, like it's it's hard to be rejected every time I ask for reconciliation. But then he says, maybe I should try harder. It's like, well, yeah, maybe you should. Maybe you should 
put forth some action mm-hmm. into getting couples therapy and getting counseling and right. like trying to work on yourself because that's what Janelle wants. She wants change from you specifically, but you are refusing to do that. You're being lazy. Mm-hmm. And this is probably what he's done their entire marriage anytime they've gotten in a fight or she's brought up something that bothers her he says he'll do the work or he he says that he'll change or let's reconcile baby let's have a renaissance i'll write you some poetry Mm -hmm. make you tingle down there a little bit and forget about how terrible i'm treating you and how i'm neglecting you in every aspect i don't know like i he just is so disconnected so i don't think he's sad by it i think he says Mm. he's sad but i don't think there's real sadness there. I'm going to disagree with you. I think that he does not want to let her go. I think Cody Brown loves Janelle. I have maintained on this podcast that she's the highest in value of all of his wives. Totes, yeah. And this is connected to his father and how his father felt about Janelle and Janelle's mother, who his father ultimately married. Mm -hmm. I think that Cody kind of gets a wistful look on his face and he tries to play it off by saying, I mean, I'm trying to be interested. I'm trying to want to be with her. I'm trying to remember how to love her. But when I'm like connecting with his energy I think he feels very sad I think he feels the loss of Janelle and I think if he could he would want her back I don't think he cares enough though to make substantial changes to the way that he's living he's not disciplined enough to give up something in order to get her and that's what Janelle is seeing and feeling yeah and when you check in and connect energetically with Janelle. She's so fucking over it. Oh, totally. I love that for her. She's like, I don't, I don't care. I don't like, even go care. have fun. Do whatever you want. If you want to build a house on, that's fine too. I'm doing me. I'm taking care of me. And there's no room in this apartment for you, bitch. I love that. Me too. But I mean, if Cody really loved her and he was really saddened by her, he would make the effort, and he just chooses not to. So mm-hmm. that's why I'm like, you don't really care though. Well, what would happen if he did make the effort in terms of Robin, do you think? Like, if he started Mm. whining and dining Janelle, if he started to go to weekly counseling sessions with her, if he started buying her flowers and writing her poetry, how do we really think Robin would feel about that kind of change in him? She'd be jealous. She'd be jealous. For sure. She'd be counting the hours that he's with her and then be like, Ari and Saul need you. Yep. It's been one day. You need to come back and give him a kiss goodnight before bed. Out of all of the wives, she is most intimidated by Janelle. Yep. Because Janelle sees right through her. Yep. And has since season one when she called her out for being a perpetual damsel in distress. Yes. Which is why Janelle is our queen. I love Janelle. This leads us to the last segment, which is back in Parowan. We've got... Mary driving there because she's got to take down two huge old pine trees that are right at the front of her B&B. And if she doesn't take them down, they threaten the integrity of the B&B. And so we kind of go into this history lesson about her great grandmother, Lizzie, who was probably in the presence of those trees. Yeah. And so Mary has attached a lot of importance to the trees, to the house, and she doesn't want to let it go. And this kind of turns into this big analogy between the trees and her actual marriage. Like she's afraid of what the B&B is going to look like without the trees. She's going to, she's afraid of like the emotional ramifications that come with removing the trees and what her ancestors might think about that. She's fearful of what's going to happen. And she likens that to what's going to happen on the other side of her divorce with Cody. So what did you think about this? I mean, this whole segment was so dumb. Yeah, they're, but like, they're very stupid. I understand. Dumb. I understand the analogy, but I'm right. just like, how many more episodes do we have to have of Mary <laughs> contemplating why or why not she should leave this marriage that doesn't even exist? Like, Cody has not cared for her in many years he literally she literally said last episode that he told her i do not care like i don't want to insert myself in your life I, or your vagina or your vagina <laughs> ever again Never. Like, he literally does not care if she lives or dies he doesn't care where she's at he, she's the one wife that he doesn't care if she lives an independent life away from him Mm-mm. he would prefer that actually and so i'm just tired of seeing this mm-hmm. drawn out of Mary just being like, I don't know. I don't know if I want to leave him. It's going to be hard. And then this whole tree thing, like, I don't know what it's going to look like. It's going to be better. It's Anything is better than what you are living right now. 
I know you think that you're happy right now and like you're a strong independent woman and you can handle everything but like you're sad and you're missing this intimacy you're missing a partner and that's totally fine and you deserve to be happy with somebody who actually values you and values what you bring to the table and loves you for you but like I'm just tired of seeing you just be in this weird limbo it's so (laughs) annoying it is annoying I think um that uh, I was moved I guess as she began to rehash once again what happened on their anniversary night when yeah. he finally tells her you know in no uncertain terms that it's just never ever going to happen when she says like I understand that we're not the same people that we were when we got married and then of course the 1990 wedding f- footage oh, god. again over, oh my god over ah. again. she's like I understand we're not the same people I get that there's a lot that has happened but why can't we be curious right. about the people that we are now? Like, I want to get to know the person you are right now. And I want you to get to know me for who I am. And maybe we can build on that. I loved that. That sounds so beautiful and vulnerable. And this is when he says, it's never going to happen. I don't want to see my... I'm not curious about your life, bitch. Yeah. I'm not curious about anything about you. I ne- I'm never going to be, which crushed her. And as you said, then she's talking about what is she going to do? She's got her choices. She can stick around, be a part of the family, but not a wife. Right. She can terminate altogether. And I forget what the third choice is because at this point I'm like unconscious and I just can't go on. <laughs> Beatrice, For I real? cannot go on. But then she's like, and he sucks. Screw him or whatever she says. Yeah. She's like, he's not worth it. He's not worth it. So screw him. Yeah. So, okay, I'm like, all right, so we're making progress. That means we are probably barreling toward, you're absolutely right, we're on episode 12. So episode 14, they're going to be out on Coyote Pass, Mary, Robin, and Cody, and Mary, with some fire in her belly, is going to tell them, like, I deserve more, I should not have to put up with this, and she's going to break up with Cody and Robin. She's making a decision. Finally. And we also have the preview for next week. We see uh, Janelle sitting down and saying that she is fighting hard to establish her estate. Yeah. I really, really want to know more about this. Yes, me too. I want to know about the coins. I want to know about what she's asking for from Cody and Robin, because again, she has invested a lot of money into their home and into the family fund. I'm sure she funneled all of her TLC money into that family fund. She was left with nothing. So I really want to know what her negotiation points are. Yes. And I worry that they're not going to show us or tell us. It's going to be vague ambiguities. It'd be nice if they could be honest because she said in this episode that Cody and Robin haven't contributed dick Mm -hmm. to her shit. Meanwhile, everybody's having to pool money for Christine's down payment on her house and Mary and all this and Robin's house. Like nobody's helping finance Janelle's shit. So I want them to get into that, but I know they're not going to. No, they're probably not going to. And as we discussed last week, Cody is probably thinking, well, you had $84,000. You sunk it into the fifth wheel, which is a stupid investment. And so that was the money that we could have put toward whatever house you want, which doesn't cause him to come out of his pocket at all. And one of the reasons he's probably annoyed with her is because he thinks that $84,000 should have gone into the family fund. Yeah. And he should have been able to draw from it. Yes. Because he's an unspeakable. Speakable lout. And he needs more Dickensian village He figurines. needs more Dickensian villages for his <laughs> wife and mini bikes and paintings and, paintings. and everything. So uh, also in the preview, we see Christine talking about how she comes into a new relationship with a lot of baggage. And so sounds like... It's David Woolley. We've met David Woolley or oh we're about God. to meet David Woolley. We've got Cody out on the f- the land with some dumb male toxic incel <laughs> fucking friend again that I'm going to have to listen to. Jesus Christ. <laughs> We see Janelle telling Christine that she doesn't miss Cody or Robin and that she hasn't spoken to Mary in a year. Love it. And then we see Cody saying that nobody's going to split him and Robin Robin apart. Mm -hmm. Because that's in the context of the estate is what it sounds like. Which makes me wonder if it's in the context of money. Mm -hmm. Probably. If Janelle is asking for some kind of money or for them to, I don't know, dip into their home. Because we know there's the rumor that they dipped mm-hmm. into their home e- equity and paid her out one twenty to $140,000. I'm sorry I repeat myself all the time. But just in case you're just tuning in, <laughs> there's this rumor that they paid her out. And maybe this is the start of that kind of a conversation. And Cody's yeah. like, well, you're not going to split up 
me and my wife. You're not going to take from our established home. That's messed up. Well, and like if you think about a million years ago, we did um, an episode. This was like towards the beginning of our podcast, probably over a year ago, where I went through the Flagstaff County records and looked up the deeds for all of these plots of land to see whose names are on what. Cody and Robin are always paired together. Mm-hmm. Whereas like Janelle and Mary will be on one to like by themselves. Christine will be on another. Like, so the three OG wives have always been willing to like put their names separately on things. But it seems like Robin always has to be tied to Cody, especially financially. And I know because they're legally married mm-hmm. too. So I wonder if that's got something mm-hmm. to do with him saying, you're never going to split us up. Like, yeah, it's finances, mm-hmm. but like Robin is not going to be willing to put her name on some plot of land to like help Janelle out or vice versa. Or take her name off a plot of right. land so that Janelle can own it outright. Right. I wonder. I bet we're overthinking it. I bet I it's something know. really stupid. It probably will nobody be anticlimactic. Can, nobody can destroy our love. <laughs> nobody cares. <laughs> you can have each other. For real. Well, are there any final thoughts you had about this episode? That I was mean, pretty much it. Oh it was a lot. I watched it again today. I watched it three times. I mean, I'm like, every time the I dedication. check out, mm-hmm. it's just like so much filler. And it just... I know they're trying to test it out and test the waters to see if people are in, interested in McKelty and Tony's dumb life. Nobody is. No, absolutely. The answer is no. Nobody is. Nobody wants that. Nobody's even interested in like Christine's single life and her birthday party. Like that's great. But like if you're not talking about Cody or like the divorce or what's happening with that, like I don't really care. I'm interested in Christine and David's romantic journey. Well, I mean, I'm I like very interested. Yeah, I'm very interested in Janelle. Maybe finding a man because I think it was last week we talked about rumors that she's been yeah. seen around Flagstaff and at Christine's wedding with an unknown man. Like, I'm totally here for that, bitch. I'm totally yes. here for that. And with Mary, too, for her to have a new relationship and or like redesign the B&B. Like, I kind of right. dig that because that B&B, how that interior designer Blair stands right. in the middle of that B&B. <laughs> The designs Doesn't and not rip just it a new one. call it out is crazy to me but i would be int- i would even be interested in that so much more than cody and robin and their maudlin children and so much more than tony and mckelty and even aspen and mitch i mean yeah i don't really care and even gwen i don't care no i like gabe and garrison me i want to see what's going on with them they they yeah. need to have a healing arc i'd like to watch that but yeah, I'm interested in the context of like a spinoff, like after these seasons are done and we get through all of these divorces, which we're probably not going to get to like the rest of the divorces until 2025. Of, yeah, 2030, new decade. We'll be getting there. Yeah, <laughs> like we're so behind on everything. Like, I just want them to like wrap up the Sister Wives franchise like they're already planning to do. But they're it's a cash cow. So they're just going to milk it for mm-hmm. however long mm-hmm. they can because they know this season is got so many viewers uh, more than they've ever had in a decade so they're just getting all that money. which is such leverage for tlc yep. to put cody and robin over a barrel and to make them show up for a tell all and sit in the room with the other wives and to answer hard questions Please. like do you want to continue to have this stream of revenues so that yep. you can continue to get your dickensian village <laughs> then you need to show up and if you do not show up to the reunion or to the tell all if you walk off you forfeit the entire season of wages yes. or 50 percent of the season's wages oh my god that'd be so amazing he would be there with bells on honey <gasps> i forgot to say that in that mormonism live episode he he, somebody asked Cody if he was interested in courting another wife uh-huh. and Cody said no I'm not going to answer that because that's a spoiler and I'll let the <gasps> network handle it I thought he already made a statement like via people.com or something that he's mon- he's a monogamist he's not interested in other wives I don't know but that's what that's he said what on that video though be. oh interesting he said spoiler I won't get into <clears throat> any of that okay. they're like you can't even tell us though if you're interested in courting another wife and he's like no spoiler I'll let TLC handle it he's not he's a monogamist and robin would never let him no never 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 um i would like to conclude this podcast by apologizing for being late we are usually a day earlier than this but as it turns out i lost one of my very best friends on sunday night her name was elanique i mentioned this because we had a podcast together and i've known her for many years she was the 
quintessence of beauty and grace and humor and kindness. Just such a down chick. And she was 47 years old. She died of metastatic breast cancer. She loved the sister wives, bitch. She yeah. would she would talk mad shit about <laughs> Cody Brown. We would just look at his picture and laugh together. I don't know if she ever listens to our podcast because it's only been for the last year, but she knew I was doing it and she was 100% into it. She loved it. Uh, she's just a light in this world. And um, I just want to dedicate this episode to my dear friend, Elanique, and um, wish her well on the next journey in her celestial kingdom yeah. wherever that is rest in peace Elanique. Rest in she peace. was a really lovely person you were a real one my yeah. friend um and that is all i wanted to say now is there anything else we need to say to these beautiful raccoons beatrice well if you love our podcast i sure hope that you give us a glowing five star five. review on your favorite podcast platform it really helps us grow the pod thank you so much and until next time which will be later this week we're going to come back to talk about plathville and also 90 day fiance Beyonce. Yes. Girl, I watched that episode. I, I was texting you. you. I'm lit. like, this is crazy. <laughs> We're going to be back to talk about that later yeah. this week. Until then, never forget, we love you very much and peace out. Bye. Bye, guys.